Okay guys, today I thought I would uh, show you a little bit about how to use uh, natural materials. Materials that you would find um, while out hunting, um, you know, the woods runners, um, the market hunters, long hunters, you know, when they were out and about, um, they couldn't just go back to uh, go back to town and pick up what they needed because a lot of times, you know, obviously they were way out in the wilderness. Um, but what I'm showing you today is for a smooth bore, um, like what I have right here. Um, ever since I started hunting with this, um, because of a shortage of time um, and not much know-how, I just use modern uh, wadding, uh, patches, and so on uh, for my hunting and shooting because um, my shot opportunities are pretty few and so I wanted to be able to uh, make it count um, whenever, whenever I did have an opportunity. But I am wanting to be a little more period correct and uh, so I, start, I decided to start experimenting with some stuff and a lot of these ideas are not original with me. Um, I got a lot of these ideas from from other people on online and on YouTube such as Keith Burgess, um, Dennis Neely at uh, traditionalblackpowderhunting.com um, and different ones like that. But uh, we'll get into uh, the different materials and how to use them. Okay guys, so what I've got here is uh, four different materials. We've got uh, some leaves, some oak leaves, and you preferably want a green, or at least partially green, for the obvious reason that they're not going to crumble all up on you, and they'll also uh, burn when you shoot if they're dry. Uh, some wasp nest, um, some leather patches, and then some tree bark. Now I have shot all of these in my smooth bore, except for the tree bark. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. Uh, this tree bark is actually um, dried. It, you'd preferably want green uh, bark, again for the same reason as the leaves, and it's just more pliable. Um, if you have a wad cutter, uh, that would be ideal for the leather and for the tree bark. I don't have one at this time, so I just used a, a scissors and, and cut it out. Um, but again, I did use all of these in my smooth bore, the, the leather, the wasp nest, and the leaves. Uh, they all worked well. Now, the loading process is the same um, for all of these materials. And with a smooth bore like I've got, um, you, can, you can use the same method with round ball as you, as you use with uh, shot. And, uh, Basically, here's how I do it. In this video that I'm about to show you, I was using the wasp nest. But basically, um, you know, first of all, obviously, you pour down your powder charge. And then on top of your uh, powder charge, you take your material um, and you wad it up and put it in. And the on top of the powder and the the one on top of the powder whether you're using the leaf or the wasp nest or what have you um, you want a thicker uh, a thicker patch in other words if you're using leaves you might use three leaves instead of one um, you know a little more wasp nest than than on top of the ball or shot so you ram that down on top of the powder and then you put in uh, your shot or your round ball uh, with a smooth board a round ball does not have to be patched but you can also patch it and then you take uh, more of your material and uh, ram it down on top of your shot or your ball um, it's that simple guys and uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of fun to uh, mess with this stuff but um, basically this is just a few ideas that you can try out. Um, I'm still uh, experimenting with it and want to use it uh, some more as I can. But all of these uh, materials 
you know, obviously, except for the leather and kit, unless you kill a deer or something, uh, can be found uh, pretty much anywhere. You know, wherever you live in the United States or even otherwise, um, all these materials can be had uh, if you just look for them. Uh, but anyway, I just thought I would kind of make this short little video on uh, wadding for smoothbore flintlocks. And um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching.